See if I got the right book here. Seventeenth chapter of the book of Luke. Hallelujah. Chapter seventeen in verse five. And the apostles said unto the Lord. <clears throat> Increase our faith. And the Lord said, If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say to the sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. But which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him by and by when he's coming from the field, go and sit down to meet. And will not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup and gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken. And afterward thou shalt <clears throat> eat and drink. Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. Amen. Can you say amen to that? Amen. amen. We have all talked throughout our lifetimes that I can remember and heard sermon after sermon, lesson after lesson about faith and great faith and increasing faith. Seemed like everybody's so interested in having such great faith to believe God for anything. They see Jesus, they walk and talk with Jesus, they've been with him, they say all the things that he does. And surely there's something that he can tell them. Surely there's something that he can share with them to, to let them in on how to believe God the way that evidently Jesus believes God. Because look at all what he does. There's nothing he can't do. The winds and the sea obey him. Demons obey him. Dead men hear his voice and he raises them up from death. The blind see, the crippled walk, the deaf hear, the dumb talk. The lepers are cleansed. The sick and the diseased are healed. People that's even deformed are made whole. Can you let us in on this? Help us to understand, teach us what it is that we can do. What, what is it that we need to know? Increase our faith. And all of my life I've heard, well, if you've had mustard seed faith, you could say to a mountain, be removed. Amen? You, you, we've preached that all over. But I want you to notice something here. 
Jesus is referring them and using the smallest of seeds to make a demonstration. We want great faith like you. I mean, evidently, man, that's going to take a lot of faith. The other day we was talking about that, remember? And he said, well, we can't find a building. We've got to take a step of faith. I said, man, that's how I'm going to take a lot of faith. <laughs> Go down and borrow money. <laughs> Woo! I don't want to look at no banker, man. Take more faith to meet that banker than it would be just to trust God. Amen. <laughs> It was, we talk about, Lord, we want, we want faith. We want to have much faith, great faith, powerful faith, wonder-working faith. And what does Jesus do? And as I began to think about this, I began to see it for the first time. He's using the smallest thing. you had faith as a seed just as the size whether he's talking about the size or the what that seed has within it it's a small how many of you ever seen a mustard seed I've seen one I used to have one it looks like a, it looks like a speck of, of black pepper real small and I've heard preachers expound on this and thought it was pretty good what they said that you plant, plant a, must, a, a mustard seed in the ground and it's so resilient that it grows in any type of weather uh, through summer, fall, winter, spring, it, it grows continually. You can, you can put a rock on top of it and it'll shoot roots out this way and come up over here. Build something on top of it, cut it down the ground and it'll just keep growing. It just keeps going. That's what I've heard. Now, that mustard seed is nothing but what God made it to be. It doesn't have a mind of its own. It's just, it has what God put in it. And it grows at the command of God. It grows at the law, of God, at God's law. He commanded that seed to grow, and it just has within it the whatever it takes for that seed. The seed goes in the ground. It germinates. And, and as I began to think about it, Lord, yeah, that's right. That seed, every seed that's planted... Every seed that's planted, no matter how small it is or how big it is. It's, it's strange to me, though, that Jesus didn't use a peach seed. You know, I mean, peach seed, you know how big that is. It's like 10,000 times the size of a mustard seed. But he uses the smallest seed. But in the first place, every seed that's planted, every seed that's planted and it grows, it has to die. It has to die and germinate in the ground in order for it to grow, to produce anything. And yet Jesus is using the smallest seed and he's telling us, you want great faith. You want increasing faith. But like the mustard seed, if you just had faith as the mustard seed, you could say to a mountain, be moved. Now, so we, we determined that, well, if we had enough faith... We can move mountains. But I got news for you this morning. You can't move a flea. Only God can move a mountain. It's not your faith. It's God. Faith is something that you have in something else. Not in yourself. A lot of folks think that if they have, a, if they believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I just believe hard enough it's going to happen. If I believe strong enough and hard enough and deep enough and long enough, it's going to work. It's going to happen. What are you having faith in? In just, a, in, in just something that's, you know, God is, God is the one who calls those things that be not as though they were. 
Now, I know there's a lot of teaching that says that we do that in the church, that we do that as Christians, but I don't teach that. The Bible says that God calls those things that be not as though they were. And so, therefore, his word calls things into existence out of nothing. And so people act like they're the same way. If I got enough faith, I'm going to call this thing out of nothing. You're not going to call anything out. God does. Your source is God. Amen. What kind of faith is Jesus? What is he telling us in this, in this demonstration of faith? But which of you having servants plowing in the field? They're doing their job. They're doing what their Lord commanded them to do. They're working the fields. They're plowing. They're milking the cow. They're slopping the pigs. They're feeding the chickens. They're gathering the grain. They're picking the fruit. They're mowing the yard. <laughs> They're watering the cattle. And the horses. They're taking care of, of all those things for their master. And after a while, they come in. And they're tired and weary from working all day. Are they going to just come in and flop down at the table to eat? No, he says the master's going to say, you gird yourself and wait on me. And then you can eat. But they've worked all day long. They've worked hard. They've been faithful and obedient to do what their master told them to do. And yet he says, you wait on me first. And then when I've filled my stomach, <laughs> when I've had my fill, when I've eaten and drunken, and I'm satisfied. And boy, do we get satisfied. If you don't believe me, come with us, on, come with, come with us today where we're going. You'll find out. <laughs> we get satisfied. He said, then you can sit down and you can eat. Does he thank them because they did what they were told? I did, look at here, Lord, I did everything you said. Now look at what I did. Look over here, look at all that I've done for you. Look at what I've done. Come on, look at it. And we're so proud and we're so, you know, we're so proud of what we've done that we want the Lord to take notice. We want the Lord to pat us on the back. We want the Lord to, to, to give us a gift. He wants want to reward us somehow. With something. At least let us eat. <laughs> we deserve to eat. Shouldn't we have first place? Shouldn't we be the first one to sit at the table and eat at your table? After all, we've sweated all day long for you. No. Does he thank him because of what they did? I troll not. When you have done all that you're commanded to do, say we're unprofitable. We are unprofitable servants. We've only done what is our duty to do. Increase our faith? How is that going to increase? How is that going to inspire me to believe? Don't I deserve anything? Don't I deserve God's recognition? Don't I deserve that he does whatever I say or ask? You deserve nothing. There's one thing that every one of us is looking for and waiting for and receive from God. Do you know what that is? Mercy. Grace. 
when we, when we behold our master, he is the one that we behold. He is the one upon which we attend. He is the one upon which we wait upon. It's, we don't receive anything from him because we've done what he says. He gives to us willingly and freely of his own will. He began us and called us. And I'm going to tell you something this morning. It is a privilege for you and me to be his servant. It is a privilege for me to follow him. Jesus is saying, look, you want great faith, and all I want you to see, all I want you to recognize is my greatness. All I want you to do is to love and honor me. Because I and the source of everything that you need. You don't have to have a room full of faith. You don't have to have faith as large as the stars. You think that there's something that you must do in order to obtain great faith, in order to do something for God or have something from God. And I tell you that even the least bit of faith can move mountains. You're putting yourself ahead of me. You need to put me first in your life. Me in your heart. Me in your mind. Me in your first thoughts of your life. I am your Lord. And you unprofitable servants. What can you give to me? I give all things to you. <clears throat> if we could just learn how to have faith, what God wants, what God wants is for us to see him in all that he is. Right. What is great faith? What is faith? It's believing him for all that he is. It isn't, it isn't some kind of a psychological pumped up in your mind thing where you're trying so hard to believe God and I'm going to believe God. <laughs> God doesn't reward you because you do that. God doesn't reward you because you think you finally figured out how to have great faith with God. And he's not going to do it simply because you've done all your duty and done what he told you to do either. It's his goodness and his mercy and his grace from which we receive. And when I see him and believe him for all that he is to me, there's nothing he will withhold from me. When I see Jesus in all of his greatness and consider him and recognize him and worship him and honor him for all that he is in himself, there is nothing that he wouldn't do for me. Amen. Well, I've been working hard all day long. God, I need to stay out here and eat. After all, I deserve it. I deserve it. You want great faith? You want increasing faith? Publican Pharisee went to the temple to pray, remember? Pharisee done the same way. Ah, I'm worthy. Look what all I've done. I've 
done everything you told us to do in the law. I've stuck with it right down the line. I even paid tithes of the smallest mint and the nias and the, and the, and the herbs and the spices and all that. I, I, I paid tithes with, tithe with mustard seed tithes. That's pretty small, ain't it? <laughs> I got 10 mustard seeds. I give one to God. <laughs> Boy, it's a pretty small gift. What do you think you're giving to God when you give him one of those little bitty seeds, huh? <laughs> but I did it. <laughs> I make sure everything I got, God gets one, 10% of it, and I'm not going to hold nothing back, even if it's a little speck of seed like a mustard seed. That's And I thank you, God, I'm not like this fellow over here. <laughs> He's a thief and a liar and a robber and a <laughs> deceiver. He's lying to the people. He's robbing them blind. It's publican. I sure am glad I'm not like he is. <laughs> Ain't I pretty? <laughs> Ain't I something, Lord? I'm really something. I mean, you really got something here. I mean, I'm one of your. I'm special <laughs> one. I'm one of your best. I'm one of the best you got around right here. <laughs> Man, if everybody just be like I am, praise God. Huh? That publican must have heard what was going on over there. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. But when he came in, he didn't even really so much as raise his head up. He was guilty. He's unworthy. He's unprofitable. He's a liar. He's a thief. He's a scoundrel. But he comes to God. He comes to God and humbles himself. And all he said would be merciful to me, a sinner. Amen. Be merciful. I'll tell you, that man went home justified rather than the Pharisee. Mm -hmm. What is great faith? <clears throat> what is increasing it's not placing all that I am up front because I am unworthy. I am nothing. Jesus said if you had faith as a mustard seed, just the smallest, the smallest seed. It doesn't have to be a, nothing big, just even the smallest things. What is he saying? You die. see the one who is all encompassing all knowing all powerful almighty all merciful this this is great faith you say, what do you mean? A centurion sent his servants to meet Jesus. And he begged him to come to his house and heal his servant who was dear to him, like a son. But he said, Lord, I didn't even want to come myself because I'm not worthy. The Pharisees and the Jews said, Lord, you've got to do this thing for him because he's worthy. He is so worthy of this that you should do for him because he has built us a synagogue. He's a good man. He loves us. He loves the Jewish people. He's a Roman, but he really loves the Jewish people and he cares about us. I mean, he's, he, he went to all expense and built us a synagogue. 
Man, that's saying something there. This was a man that had money, and he was willing to give that money to help the Jewish people. He's worthy that you should do this for him. Man always thinks that he's worthy. If you do something that's good, you're worthy. But when the man sent his servants to meet Jesus, he said, I didn't come myself because I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to speak to you. What does that tell us there? Let number one, that tells us that he recognized the greatness of Jesus. He recognized the... <sighs> One of the, 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 the most special, unusual he's divine. He's divine person. He is the, he is the greatest human being. It's ever lived that I've ever heard of. And I'm not even worthy to stand in his presence and look at him in his, in his eye. After all, I'm a Roman. He's a Jew. He talked with the Jews. He, he built them a synagogue. He wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't a stranger to the Jews. He dealt with them every day of his life. He lived among them. But when it came to Jesus, there's something very, very special about Jesus. Lord, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to even speak with you. But say the word. Just speak a word. You don't even have to come to my house. You don't have to lay hands on my servant. You don't have to see him. Just say it. And he'll be healed. For I also am a man of authority. I'm a man of great authority. I have servants under, under me. I say to one, come, he comes. I say to one, go, he goes. I say to one, you go do this, he does. I don't have to see him do it. I know he'll do it because I told him to. If he don't do it, he forfeits his life. <laughs> he better do what I say. Or I'll put him in jail or take his life from him. This is how he pictured Jesus. Jesus, in his estimation, has all authority and power over all sickness and disease in this earth. Jesus has authority and power over all. His word commands and it obeys. His word commands and it is done. The Roman soldier understood that kind of power because that's the kind of power he had with his servants. The power that Rome invested in him. And he said, Lord, you're such a great man. In all wisdom, in all grace and mercy and goodness. And I'm not even worthy to stand before. Speak your word. All you have to do is say it. What did Jesus say about the man? When Jesus heard the words, he marveled. Mm -hmm. And he said, I've never found so great a faith. No, not in Israel. 
increase our faith. Well, maybe the centurion could teach them how to have faith. He counted himself unworthy to even speak with Jesus. And they're walking with him every day. They're going with him everywhere he goes. They're listening to everything he says. And this man don't even feel worthy to stand next to him. But he realized something about Jesus. He saw him for everything that he is. Whereas the disciples must not have. Just say the word. And it'll be done. When the disciples were in, were in the boat with Jesus, remember? And Peter walked on the water. He came to Jesus and he said, Lord, I'm, I perish, save me. And Jesus reached out and saved me. I've preached on that here. He didn't lose all of his faith because he didn't have any faith. He went and said, Lord, save me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he didn't have any faith to walk on the water, but he sure did have enough faith to believe that Jesus could save him. Huh? We talk about the, you know, talk about how, you know, Peter lost his faith. Well, he did lose his faith when he was walking on the water. But that wasn't the end of it. <laughs> When he got back in the boat, what did Jesus say? Oh, thou little faith. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> Wherefore did you doubt? Hallelujah. One time, Jesus left the jurisdiction of Herod he had just killed John the Baptist, and there was uh, friction in the air. There was, you know, trouble brewing in the land. So Christ decided to get up and leave that area out of, jur out of his jurisdiction and go into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. If you look on the map, you'll see that it's up on the northwestern coast of Israel and People that live there are mixed. There's Jews and Greeks and Gentiles that live there. Jesus entered into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And a woman of Phoenicia <coughs> heard about Jesus being there. She knew, she knew of him. She was a Greek woman, Syrophoenician. She was Greek. She ran to Jesus and asked him, Thou son of David, please have mercy on me and heal my daughter. She's vexed with the devil. Jesus paid her no mind. He ignored her. Can you imagine that? Somebody said, just call on Jesus. He'll heal your every prayer. <laughs> Here's a lady crying out, Lord, God, please have mercy on my daughter. Jesus just walks on by. <laughs> Not paying attention. But he was giving us an illustration of something. Something's going on here. Christ didn't come to the coast of Tyre and Sidon for nothing. Right. He knew why he was there. Since Jesus wouldn't listen to her, ignored her, brushed her off. Huh? That doesn't sound like Jesus, does it? It doesn't sound like Jesus. I mean, any time anybody ever come to Jesus, he was right there with them. What do you want? What do you want? Okay, here you go, here you go. Touching and healing. This Greek woman, crying, begging. He just walks away. So she turns to his disciples. Will you please help me? Will you do something? If he's not going to help me, will you help me? What do you expect me to do, lady? <laughs> I can't do anything. 
They go running to Jesus. They said, Lord, tell this woman to leave us alone and get out of here. She's crying after us. We can't, we, we can't do it. We can't help her. Please send her away. She's bugging us. <laughs> well, here, he, here she comes again, crying after Jesus. I like that about that woman. She was pesky and she wasn't going to give up. <laughs> she was determined. This is my last chance and my only chance. If I don't get it now, I ain't never going to get it. Lord, please. And the Bible says that when she came the second time to Jesus, what did she do? She worshiped him. You want great faith? Learn how to worship. You want the Lord to do something for you? You're desperate. You need His touch. You need to receive from God. You need to believe God for something. Get on your knees and worship Him. Learn how to Learn how to humble yourself before the Lord. And He will lift you up. What is the Lord looking for? The best of the best or the humblest of the humble? He's looking for the proudest of the proud or the lowest of the low. Hallelujah! God's not looking to see how much you did for him. He's looking at how much you look at him and worship him and trust in him. Oh, hallelujah. It isn't what we do. It's what he does in us. It's not what we can give to him. It's what he can give to us. Hallelujah. I used to do it with my legs a lot, but now I'm up my arms and shoulders. <laughs> I'm getting too old now to do it with my legs, amen. <laughs> he fell down, worshiped him. Lord, have mercy on me. It's not me to take the children's bread. And give it to the dog. That's right. I came to call the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I know, Lord. You're right. You're so right. I know you are. We don't deserve the children's bread. I'm a dog. But even the little pet gets the crumbs that fall from the table. I don't deserve to sit up there with the family and sit down there and have them just give me a plate and just fill it full of food for me. I know, I know, I don't deserve it. But even the little pets in the house get crumbs from the master's table. Oh, woman, great is thy faith. That's only two times in the Bible that Jesus ever said anybody had great faith and both of them were Gentiles. That's right. That's powerful. The Roman soldier and the Syrophoenician woman. She didn't even belong to the Jewish people. She was from Greece, Syrophoenician. She's among the pirates, <laughs> the ship's pirates. <laughs> she was a lowly class woman.
But Jesus said, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Isn't that something? Why did he tell her that? I believe it was because she recognized that everything that Jesus said was true and that she herself didn't deserve anything. That's right. I'm unprofitable. I'm unworthy. I'm a dog. But still, still surely there's a few crumbs even for the dogs. May I please have my crumbs. A long time ago, I remember we used to have rabbits as kids. We'd raise rabbits, mm -hmm. a, few, a few rabbits. And we, had, we had a couple of them as pets. And we let them come in the house sometimes. <laughs> and they'd run around the house just like a dog. <laughs> and we'd sit down at the table to eat, and that rabbit come, come up and rear up on your leg and beg for food just like a dog. <laughs> Hey, you know, if you need something, you should give it to him. That rabbit eat it. Give me another. You know how they do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the whiskers. <laughs> <laughs> that rabbit was just so content. <laughs> and he, didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't go back down the floor. He just stayed right there waiting for the next, waiting for the next <laughs> morsel, you know. <laughs> I tell you one thing. Hallelujah. I'm glad to know there's somebody that cares about me. Amen. Hallelujah. I may be somebody low down nobody cares about, but there's somebody that cares about me. Hallelujah. And here's the good thing about it. There's a song I've sung here. Unworthy am I of the grace that he gave. Unworthy to hold to his hand. But he made me worthy. And now by his grace, a pauper, I walk with the king. Hallelujah. Unworthy am I with angels to sing. Unworthy to hold to his hand. I thrill just to know that he loved me so much. A pauper, I walk with the king. You want great faith? There is nothing that God can't do. Quit looking at, oh, if I just had great faith, and had great things. Jesus wasn't trying to, 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 to give us the idea of how that we can do great things by moving mountains. He's wanting us to see how great so little faith can do. Just a little faith. Just enough faith is great faith. Wow. Just like the mustard seed is so small. And yet it can move mountains. I want great faith. God says all you have to do is like the Syrophoenician woman. Yes. Just give me a crumb, yes. Lord. You're right in what you say, but I'm asking for you. I'm trusting in you. You can do anything. And I'm not going to give up. I'm not worthy of But you're worthy. You're worthy of my confidence, of my trust. You're worthy of my praise. You're worthy of my reverence. You're worthy of my worship. My heart is yours. My mind is yours. 
My life is yours. My daughter is yours. All that I have is yours. Hallelujah. Jesus said, great is your faith. The Roman soldier said, I'm not worthy, Lord, but just speak it. You have authority over all things. Just say it. Hallelujah. The greatness is not in the seed, but in he who supplies all things and makes it grow. Hallelujah. God can do anything. Anything. There's nothing impossible with God. Do you believe that? Hold on. Do you believe that? There's nothing. I don't care what your problem is. It doesn't matter how surmountable that it is. There's nothing too high or too great or too, too much for God. It's like the old song says, no valley too low or mountain too high for God. After all, who made the mountain and who made the valley? God did. Well, I'm down in the valley. I'm down in the valley so low. Well, who made that valley? God made the valleys. I want to be on the mountaintop. He made the mountains. It's not about us. It's about him. Oh, God, if I just have enough faith, I just have, what we're really saying is, God, don't you care enough about me? Don't you know? Lord, I'm in such a situation here. So what's wrong here? What's wrong with me? I got enough faith. What's going on with my life? There's nothing too hard for God. We're not looking at God. We're not worshiping God. We're, we're just looking at the things. We're looking at what we want. We're looking at ourselves. We're thinking about ourselves. We're trying ourselves. We're trying to make it happen ourselves. Wow. Jesus said, just enough faith. It's a little teeny weeny bitty seed can move mountains. <laughs> I want great faith. <laughs> Give me a peach seed here. Give me a peach seed faith. <laughs> That's not it. The greatness is in God. The greatness is in Jesus. Are we waiting upon him? Are we just simply believing him? I can't do it. It's like, the, like some preacher said, I couldn't heal a mosquito with a toothache. You know? <laughs> we, we can't do anything. But he can do anything. He can do all things. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Great faith. Be like a seed. Think of yourself this way. Be like a seed and die to yourself. Yes. Oh, you of little faith, die to yourselves. Oh, small ones, die to yourself. So that you may live and bear fruit. Wow. Hallelujah. So as we live unto God, As we live unto God, there's nothing he will withhold from us. There's nothing he wouldn't give to us. Hallelujah. I treasure him more than I treasure what he gives me. Somebody says, well, God will give you a lot of things. He'll bless you and give you this and give you that and do this and do that. But I love him more than the things that he gives to me. Somebody said, well, don't you want to be blessed? Sure, I want to be blessed. Don't you like money? Oh, you better believe I like money. 
<laughs> Don't you like cars and automobiles and fine homes and all that stuff? Yeah, I like all that stuff. But give me Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, I like my position in the world, but give me Jesus. There's nothing in this world that can help me like Jesus can help me. I can't even help myself. I can't do it myself. I can't do it by myself. But he can do it for me. Lord, be merciful to me. Give me a crumb. Whatever, Lord. I trust you. You can do it. You want great faith? That's what it is. Hallelujah. Oh, if the Lord would only do this for me. And I'm going to go to church and see God do something. Let me tell you something. You need to go to church with a thought in mind. Lord, I love you. I worship you. I adore you. I praise you. I lift you up above all, Lord. And there's nothing that God wouldn't do for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God knows your condition. He knows your problem and your troubles and your woes. But he would rather see somebody laying in their problems and woes in their sick bed, worshiping and loving him and praising him, than somebody that's later, well, I've just had enough faith to believe in God. I'm going to believe in God. <laughs> no, sir. It's time to worship God. It's time to rejoice in the Lord. I think, I think a lot of people feel a whole lot better when they're sick if they learn how to rejoice in the Lord right. even when they're sick. Right. And pretty soon you ain't sick no more. That's right. Amen? That's right. You know what, Brother Robin, one of these days, my brother, one of these days, as you continue to rejoice and worship God, every day, Every day, every day and every night, every night every and all through, the, all through the hours, 24 <laughs> one of these days, you're going to find that you can raise in hands and they're going to be completely whole and complete. Yes. One of these days, you're going to rise up out of that chair and you're going to have both legs and both feet completely whole. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And your eye is going to be completely complete and well both of them are going to be perfect and it's all going to happen to everybody hallelujah Amen. one of these days you know why that's great faith that's great faith Lord you told the truth I'm a liar and he's true let every man be a liar and God be true Hallelujah. Lord, increase my faith. The Lord said, okay, shut up and listen to me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord, if I want to have more faith, said, okay, just follow me. Praise God. Keep your eyes on me. Keep your focus on me. Don't look around you, but look at me. I, you're, you can't do it yourself. You may be happy with what's going on, but look at me. I want you to rejoice in me. I am your strength. I am your life. I am your power. I am all that you are. I am all your all in all. There's nothing else in this world for you but me. I am your Lord. I am your master. I am your God. And I want you to worship me. And when the church begins to realize that it's in worshiping and praising Him and, and in Him and in the Spirit of God, then there is nothing, there's no telling what God will do in the church. There's no telling what God will do in your physical body. There's no telling what God will do in your heart and in your lives. Amen. You want great faith? Have great worship. You want great faith? Humble yourself down before Him. He who has great faith, evidently. Listen, I'm going to say this and close. He who has great faith is he who least esteems himself. That's right. Katie, you can put that on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> put it in bold letters. He who has great faith is he who has the least esteem of himself. Stand with me. Jesus himself, greatest of all, 
did not esteem his own self by himself. But he attributed everything that he was and all that he did and all of his faith and all of his works, he attributed to his father. His father. It's not me who doeth the works, but my Father. He doeth the work. But I and my Father are one. You and I this morning are the same. It is not us, but it is Christ in us. It's not us, but it's Him. You want great faith? Die to yourself and live unto him. Hallelujah. And there is nothing that shall be impossible to you. Hallelujah. Because when we learn how to unite with God, man, We've tapped into the source. <laughs> when we learn what Jesus learned, what he was, then we've tapped into the source of everything. Nothing shall be impossible because we're tapped into the one who can do all things. Hallelujah. Get yourself out of the way. Get your mind out of the way. Yes. Step back. Quit thinking wrong. You're thinking wrong. <laughs> Grow like a seed. Believe in one that's greater than you are. Yes. He's more than able. I love that verse. Our God is able to do exceeding, yes. abundant, yes. above yes. all yes. that we are able to ask mm -hmm. or think according to the power that's working. Oh, how great is thy faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That means nothing hinders it. That means it continues, continues on. It doesn't stop. It may be small. How many knows what a big shot is? I've told you that before. What a big shot is, it's a little shot that keeps shooting. <laughs> And what is great faith? It's little faith. It keeps going. It doesn't quit. It may be small, but like the seed, it's going to grow. Yes. Nothing can stop it. <laughs> Cut it down on the ground. It's going to keep going. Build on top of it. It'll, it'll run over here and come up again. Whatever the circumstances in life are, that little seed is going to keep going. And nothing is impossible. Faith. Get with Jesus because nothing ever stopped him. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! If you, want, if you want great faith, learn how to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Nothing can stop him. Hallelujah. We're going to believe in God for everything. Why we believe in God for everything? Brother Elder Bob, why in the world we believe in God for a church here? I'll tell you why. Because we're following Jesus. Yes. He's the one. Ain't that right? He's the one that makes everything possible. And I'm trusting something to be a heap bigger than I be. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Aiden's looking at me and said, what in the world are you saying? What you need to do is go home and watch Sergeant York and you find out. <laughs> Father, thank you this morning. Everybody say, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Thank you for great faith this morning. Thank you, thank you Lord, for undying faith this morning. Thank you for increasing faith this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for your grace and mercy. We look for the mercy of the Lord Jesus when he comes from heaven 
with all of his holy angels. The Bible says that clearly, black and white, where it's for the mercy of God at the coming of Christ Jesus. Everything that we have from God is of his mercy and grace. Resolved. I have come to the point in my life I am resolved to believe that. Whatever God says, that's it. Amen. He's proven to me over and over and over and over again in my life. I've grown in that. You've grown in that. If you haven't, then it's time for you to start growing in that faith. You grow in that until you get to the point where you say, whatever God says, that's it's right. so and that's it. Yes. yes. Undying faith, a faith that never dies because it's planted in Jesus. My hopes and my goals and all that I hope to be and have rests in Him. He is my reward. save anybody. Believe in the one who died. Rose again. Amen. Father, thank you this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you. God, of all that we could do for you in obedience, faithful. And all that you've called us to do, help us. You give us the strength to do it. And we're grateful and we're thankful to even be a part of your household to be a servant in the house of God but they, to be a doorkeeper in the house of God is greater than to dwell in the tents of wickedness and Lord each and every one of us no matter what our position is we all wait upon you we look for the Shekinah glory of God in the house we look upon your smiling face and long to serve you and to wait upon you. For you give us all things that we need. You shelter us. You keep us. You feed us. You supply our every need in life. Everybody say, Lord, Lord, I want you, I want you more than anything, more than anything in this life. 